Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode in the Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can intercept requests in Selenium using the Selenium-Wire package and we can do a lot of different stuff like we can get the request details, the header, the body and also we can block the requests and do a lot more. So if you click the link down in the description, you will be redirected to this documentation and you can scroll down and see everything that you will you, that you are able to do if you don't know what requests are if we go and right click and click inspect and go to the network tab basically the request is everything that the website needs to function so it will request for the html code the javascript code third party images or javascript or any assets that the website needs so that's basically what the requests are. So you can find all the requests by going to the network tab. So yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. So first of all, let's scroll up. And what I would like to see is let's work first of all with the example. So let's copy the example, go back to Visual Studio Code. You can clone my GitHub repository, but for this video, you don't really need to. But I will continue in my GitHub repository. So I'll create a new file. Let's call it sw.py. And let's copy our example. So what happens here is we visit the page and then when the page is loaded, we get the requests from the driver. And then we print each request URL, the status code and the hand. So let's go ahead and see how that's like. So first of all, it opens the browser and then when it closes it or when it's finished with, with everything above this function right here. So when everything is finished above that, and above that, we only have the page loading. So once it's loaded, then we get the request. So first of all, we saw how we can get the information for its request, some basic information. Now you can get a lot more. And as you see, we got the URL for request, the status code, and also the header. Now I would like to use a custom example. I searched for mountains and then got to images tab and I'll use this URL to run some tests. So what we can do is right click and click inspect, then go to the network tab. And if we reload the page, as you see right here, if I click in a request that displays an image and go to the preview tab, we can see an image that is also displayed here. So I can try to find one. Now I'm not sure if I can, there we go. So this image right here is this image. So if we go on headers, as you'll see, there has been a request to that URL and most images has this part the same. So as you'll see here, if I click this one, this one, this one, it's always the same. So what we can do is copy the start of that URL, which stays the same always. Go back on the code and we can have an if statement and we can say if request.url dot starts with and that URL then we want to print the request dot URL and that's basically gives us all the images URLs. So what I want to do is import time and then wait an extra three seconds after the page is visited and then get the images. So let's do that. And there we go. So we got all the links. So if I click to one of the links, we can see the image. But how can we get the body of, let's say, some JSON file? So now this is a random JSON we can use. And if we go on headers, we can get the request URL and copy it. Now, this is not really useful. This is just an example of how we can get the JSON from a response body. This is called the body right here. So let's go back and we can say if request dot URL dot starts with and as I will show you, we will not use the entire URL. This part could not be the same sometimes. So I'll just leave it to this. And then if it does, then we want to say body equals to request dot response to body. And then we will print the body. But as you'll see in a bit, we will have an issue 
it actually it's not an issue it's just how it is so it will not display some some readable data but instead it will display the body in bytes now how we can make it to a readable context like this one right here now a way to fix that is we can use a utility from selenium wire which is the selenium wire.utils the decode function and let's copy the example and paste it here and we can say body equals to the response which response should be equal to request the response and we basically use that function and we give it the body which is in bytes and also the headers as a specific part of the headers and then we should print the body and we should get a readable json file so let's test it out and there we go so it worked but we get an b in the start and it is inside a string and we don't really need that now to remove the b from the start what we can do is we can say decoded body underscore body equals to body dot decode and then utf does eight and that will basically make it a normal string without that b in the start so let's print the decoded body and see if it worked and there we go so now we actually get the json now if you want to use that json you will have to do import json so we you'll have to use the json package that comes with python and you'll have to say json data equals to json.loads and you want to load that decoded body now if i print that it will be basically the same you will not understand the difference but when you want to get a value from that json or you want to use it as a json then you will have to do it as we did it right here so that's how we can get some information from that response now let me show you how instead of doing it after we finish everything above that how we can do it while the browser is running so we can do it more dynamic so as the request happens we can get that information so we basically get them the information live so a way to do that is we can make a function called def and then we can say intercept and that will give us a request and for now let's just print the request dot url and then the way to use that we can say driver dot request underscore interceptor to that interceptor so let's comment that out and let's test it and as you will see we are getting the request live as they happen as you saw the browser didn't have to close to get the request now this is useful because basically you want to get the request as they happen or that's useful if you want to block a request live so what we can do is let's say you want your script to be more efficient so the browser basically slows by the images and maybe you don't want the images to be shown so you can make your script faster so what you can do is if you go to selenium wire and we go to block a request you can see an example that it says block png jpeg and gif images so let's do that so right here we can say if the request dot path or dot url actually actually let's leave it to path ends with png jpeg or gif then abort that request but a better way to do that because our images don't have an ending so if i scroll up and, and i click an image you will you will not see a dot png at the end of the url or something like that so for for our case we will not use the ending but instead we will use how the url starts so we will copy this and we can say if request.url.starts with and if it starts with this url then abort the request so if we run the code we will see that that works now the reason those images are not disabled but if i scroll down every other image is disabled is because google pre-renders a part of a website a part of the website so when it pre-renders the website it doesn't request that image from the url we saw but it actually saves it locally so it uses the data image url 
and that's why those are not intercepted. They are, but we are not targeting those specific ones. We only targeted the ones with that URL. But you get the point, so you can actually disable those ones as well. But I'll leave that to you. We don't have to do that. Now, we saw how we can stop our request. But what if we actually need to replace that request? So let me show you a fun thing we can do. So let's go back to the documentation. And if I scroll down, we will see example mock our response. And let me explain what we will be doing. So if we go back, what we can do is every request that meets our criteria, this criteria right here, the criteria can be whatever you want, but whatever request meets this criteria, what we can do is replace that with a specific image, for example, or a specific request response that you want. So for example, you can re replace a JSON with something else, with your own JSON and stuff like that. In our case, we will replace the image. So let's see how we can do that. So as you see right here, we have an example for mocking our response, which is basically replacing the response. And to do that, we can copy this right here. And instead of aborting, let's comment that out. We can do that. So we can create our own response and we can give it status code of 200, which means success. Or you can give it whatever you want. If you want it to fail or so something else, you can do your own. And then for headers that won't work, we have to do image does JPEG. If we want to show a JPEG image, for example, and then let's find a JPEG image. So let's go up here. And let's say we want to replace all images with this image right here. So let's copy the image address and give it as the body. And that's basically all we have to do, I think. So first of all, let's try it out and see if it will work. So now I have to scroll down and it didn't work. Okay, so why is that? Okay, so what I want to do is try to download an image and use that instead. Okay, can I JPEG? There we go or GBG, it's the same thing. Okay, so actually I found out how we can do that. So the body doesn't expect to get the actual URL of the image, but instead it expects to get the contents of that image. Like if we go on, on a JPEG file, it expects to get the actual file and not a URL. So the way I did it is I downloaded the file locally, and then in the body, I opened that file and I read its context. So I read basically the code of that file. Okay, so first of all, I have to add a timer and let's put time.sleep and let's put two minutes. So I did that because the browser closes after it loads and we don't want to do that. So that's why I did it. And now let's test it again. So if I scroll down, as you'll see, all the images are now displayed with the image we downloaded. So I use this one and I replace all the images with this one right here. Now there's a lot more than you could do with this Selenium Dash Wire package. So check it out down in the description and check what else you can do. But yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next for this series or for any other type of video you would like to see. Also hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos. So yeah, with that said, see you in the next video.